So now in this video, we're going to wire up the NE5532 dual op amp. There's two op amps in here. We're using one as a rail splitter. So we're going to use the other one as a voltage follower. What that means is we're going to take the voltage from this trim pot, which does not hold voltage with loads very well. So it's 10,000 ohm of resistance because we're using an eight, uh, 18 volt power supply. We want a fairly high value trim pot. I haven't been mentioning that in recent videos, but uh, 10,000 ohm uh, trim pot will keep it from getting too hot. But in case we have a wiper along here and that connects to the output here. By the way, this is inserted in the opposite direction I've been using lately because as we saw in the last video, I have connection problems. So it looks like we kind of wore down the slots that this plugs into when it's facing the other way. So I flipped it here. I think we pretty much solved all those connection problems. So it wasn't acting like a terribly good voltage divider when it can disconnect from one side and give us the full voltage from the other. But uh, in any case, we give a voltage to the op amp and it's going to output that voltage and be able to provide more current than what we could have got from the trim pot. All the trim pot's going to do is tell it the voltage that it needs to output, it will do the rest. And actually, we've already been doing that. So the uh, power supply is 18 volts right there. We made a virtual ground using a voltage follower. So in relationship to this point, because we have two resistors, we'll zoom in and take a look at that. We have nine volts positive and nine volts negative. If we measure the voltage here from the negative rail though, you'll see it's nine volts because where these two resistors are is nine volts. But that's halfway and we can call that ground the halfway point. That way we can have a more positive or a more negative. So you can see we have a voltage divider there. Two resistors. They're fixed resistors though, but one goes to the positive rail, one to the other. They're 100,000 ohm resistors because again, you don't really need any current. And there's a little bit of leakage, so you could at some point have too much resistance. But for the most part, you can use a very high resistance. It won't matter. All the currents flowing through the resistors, practically none through the input. And so the voltage is holding steady. So we have that little jumper there from the output to the inverting input. So it's inverting, which means if the voltage drops below what we set here, then the output will just go up in voltage. If the voltage goes down at the inverting input in relationship to the non-inverting input, if the voltage goes down, then the output raises the voltage. So it holds the voltage steady to this point. It does whatever it needs to to hold it steady within its limitations. And so we're going to build a voltage follower. It's doing the same thing we have here. So it's wired practically the same. I already have this little jumper here because they're kind of tricky to get in the board and then you can't see me inserting it anyways. My hand blocks it. And uh, so we have that. Let's do our our load first. So we're going to take a red LED that will light up when the output is more positive. So we have the long lead towards the output there. Short lead, the cathode, we're going to put to the ground there. Long leads the anode. The green LED, we're going to wire in the opposite direction. And so the long lead goes to where the ground is, our virtual ground. Short lead, the cathode, goes down one row right there. And in the last video, when I wired this, I missed the LEDs we want to go to that side of the LEDs and then go to the output and so I have the power applied because we were taking voltage measurements earlier and so normally when you wire stuff you don't have the uh, power supplied but we're going to the output top in there so again just like this side non-inverting input inverting input and output is the pin layout so now what we're gonna do we have the trim pot right here and now we got to go to uh, this side and that will give us our variable voltage and it's a voltage divider using the trim pot and there we go so now we know that uh, it's turned more towards the positive it's towards the uh, red jumper there because this is not inverting the output and so let's zoom back but it is a voltage follower so the LED is bright now 
and when when we turn it hopefully it won't uh, flicker at all since we turned it this way but now you can see it getting dimmer and now it's going off really fast so let's take a look why and it's going to be trickier to uh, measure the voltage this way but uh, it should be probably I'm guessing about 1.7 volts right now so okay 1.9 volts and uh, it's a little darker than I thought it would be for 1.9 but if we go to the output we can go to the jumper that also goes to the inverting input because it's a solid connection there you can see we have 1.9 volts at the output which is what we set with uh, the trim pot there 1.9 pretty much spot on now let's go to the negative region just until so right now neither LED is lit up that's because we're in between the forward voltage of the two LEDs so the green one just started coming on I think you could notice that and uh, so it's gonna be about two volts okay about 2.2 .2, negative 2.2 .2, I should say it's an actual negative voltage the uh, the output swung into the negative voltage as we can see right here and it's the same voltage so it takes more voltage to get the green LED to conduct so you can kind of get a sense of the voltage once you realize how much they block but you know it's the closer I get to the negative rail the brighter the LED will get now it doesn't go all the way to the rail though it has a limit we're gonna go to this virtual ground and uh, so okay we got negative 7 volts there and I thought it was going to be a little higher negative 7 there we'll go to this jumper and uh, negative 7.5 there and it's pretty much spot on the same there I thought that was all the way to the negative rail that is huh that's weird should be negative 9 so we'll go all the way to the positive rail and uh, we'll hopefully see the limitation there let's go uh, there so yeah there we have 9 volts positive and so at the output we probably will have I think I think uh, just a tad bit more than 8 volts okay 8.26 so you don't go all the way to the rail but we should with the uh, trim pot I don't know why it's not going all the way so should go all the way to turned all the way to negative so in any case Maybe there's something wrong with the trim pot. Maybe it's making sure. There we go. So it's negative 9 volts. That's what we expect. And we come up here to where the output is. And there you can see it doesn't make it uh, all the way to the rail. To the negative uh, direction either. It's a little a little short. So you got to work within those voltages. This is just a demonstration circuit. We're just lighting LEDs. And you can see that uh, the less voltage you apply the less the LEDs light up but otherwise it works perfectly fine for what we're doing here but if you need something that goes to rail to rail you're gonna need a, a different op amp or a comparator whatever you're using so in any case hopefully that all made sense doing these little projects helps a lot helped me a lot in understanding more complex circuits so obviously this isn't terribly exciting not a whole lot you'll probably do with this there's a lot more wiring involved for more interesting circuits but you can't understand the more complex circuits until you understand the simple circuits because complex circuits are just a bunch of simple circuits slapped together and so once you understand all them understanding the complex circuit will be really easy so thanks for watching I will see you in the next video